Where would you stand in the days of slavery? Would you be on the side of the slave owners? Yeah, against it, obviously, well, obviously. Well, wait a second, just ask where you are now with animal rights. Uh, well, why is it worse to kill a human? I want to know why it's worth it, worse if it's not brain capacity. Because we're human beings and we shouldn't kill other human beings. And law as well, of oh, course. No, 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 no. We're not going to talk about law because what's legal hasn't always been moral. I took my phone out to take a photograph. This eagle turned around, literally turned around. And you might think I'm a bit crazy. Sorry, I looked at the situation. I, I stopped eating meat on a spiritual basis. Wow, what karma and stuff like that, that energy. Yeah, I, I mean, it just happened because I'm a spiritual person, it just happened. When I thought about the whole situation, I realized it's human beings trying to take from animals to supplement themselves. Yeah. So when you look at meat and you look at meat towards protein, that's what, but there's, there's um, vegetation of the land that will give us all what our body needs. We shouldn't be eating any animal products, to yeah. be quite honest. And yeah. I, you know, because a, a calf will feed the milk of the mother, it's there for. We don't go to a woman's breast and say, oh, we need some yeah, milk. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? We're not baby cows, are we? That's right. Yeah. We need to work at changing people. I think we just need to work on our self, um, our self behavior. Because if we are behaving a certain way, we're speaking a certain way, we eat a certain food and so forth, yeah. It's, it's almost like an example of how we should do it. People will question us. I think there should be laws protecting animals. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, I don't think people should have the choice to butcher and kill them and torture them and eat them. Well, that's true, I believe that. When you think about it, uh, the animals have become... Uh, uh, they're on the project line. And they're bred just for eating. Yeah. yeah? Which is cruel. It is cruel because I always believe, you know, when you think about it, uh, an animal cries, yeah. an animal has emotions, yeah. they have love and yeah. we know that. I mean, I've worked with pigs, I've worked with cows yeah. um, and I know that a sow doesn't give two hoots about their piglets and that's the truth. And it's not on the basis of it's... it's a sow in a factory farm? That's right. Because if it was... Had litters taken from them before, yeah? Yes, we, we done that castration and all that. It, you know, I was blind to that kind of factor because I was in the, involved in that castrating of, of, of um, piglet. But the fact of the matter is the mother will lie down on the piglets and wouldn't even know. Because they're stuck in a crate, that's it's called right. a farrowing crate, they can't turn around and they're suffering. Yes. I think that's a different scenario to like a pig on a sanctuary, whether they that's care about their kids. You know, everything you're saying is right and I won't argue with that. But you've got to understand even as I'm speaking to you about this, you, you can correct me on this uh, um, and educate me on this because when a person is in the thick of things, they can't see. Because if I knew, I wouldn't be working in there. Do you see what I'm saying? And people are doing things because, like you said, convenience in, in certain aspects of um, like Culture as well, like you were saying, yep. cultural. He's, we've been conditioned by society. Right. But you know, like I, I gave him an example, like if we're brought up in, in the, the United States, with a 400 years worth of slavery, that we'd be brought up into that culture and be like, oh, this is normal. This is, and the only reason that changed because people started going, wait a second, this is horrible. Yeah. We need a, they had a war and they were like, let's stop this, you know what I mean? Yeah. The Holocaust in Germany, you know, like people like, well, well, they had a massive war over that too. But like the people in Germany, like, I guess that they were going to be killed if they opposed Hitler. But like, yeah. I mean, this just because this is happening now, right? This is happening now. We know it's bad and we're all contributing to it. Like a lot of us are contributing to it and we're complacent. But this is like one of those times in history where we're going to be like, okay, what side of history am I going to be on? You know, am I going to be one of those people who's shouting from the rooftop saying, stop, this is wrong. You know, we're going to look back in history at something that's immoral. Um, or we're going to be one of those people who, you know, they, they're just too lazy to change. Or, you know, I knew it was wrong at, at the time, telling their grandkids, oh, I knew it was wrong at the time, I didn't change, you know, like. I believe that, you know, there are certain things that I see in life. 
how people listen is when people are conscious. And I think one of the factors that goes, that goes perfectly with the way we should live is love. Do so you reckon I'm, love could uh, undo animal agriculture and all the torture will, and death? It will, it will, because the people are, are desirous, yeah. desirous, people who are desirous over uh, feeding their greed, or, uh, they can't see past that. People are addicted to TV, they say that they can't see past the... I get it. You see this I mean? addiction here has direct victims that are being slaughtered, so it's, it's almost like your, your addiction to meat and dairy and eggs and all these things have animals that are suffering in factory farms and, and slaughterhouses because of it. So like with smoking, you know, you might be a bit of second-hand smoke or whatever, but this is something you're doing to yourself. You know, alcohol abuse and drugs, I mean, unless you're hurting family around you, but let's yeah. just say you're just hurting yourself. With, when you go in and buy the chicken, the animal's raised in a factory, they're suffering, they're killed at six weeks old and they go into a slaughterhouse to, to be butchered and killed. So this is like trying to get people who are human beings to connect with a different species who are suffering. And I think love is a big part of that. I honestly, I do, I do believe it. I believe, do believe that when I started, it was coming from a place of love. I cared, like, oh my God, what are they doing to that poor chicken? Like, that's love, isn't it? Like, I'd defend them. Like, if I saw someone hurting you guys, I'd be in there and I'd be trying to defend you. And I see that the same with pigs and chickens and cows that people don't care but like they need us to like talk for them don't right. they? they you know I, i'll give you one experience that i had um i like um, um feathered pillows uh, downing yeah, yeah, uh, because yeah. i sleep good in them um i don't have any now now it's strange because i bought a, a, a duvet that was down um feathers and you know what happened was is it stunk like death it really did. It, wow. no matter, it, uh, now, I wanted to find out about this. It yeah, made me find out. And I found out that they're taking the soft part of the, of the feathers from the, from the duck. I realized that the amount of sometimes they're, they're ripping the skin. And that goes with the feathers. And that's why we have that stench. You know, I took yeah. that thing back. And I said to myself, after seeing, that sto seeing the story and how they do it, I said, I'm not going to have downing anymore. Wow. No more feathers, no, because... So that was education, you educated education. yourself. And it, again, again, had I not been conscious in the first place to find out, yeah. I would probably just bear with it. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, because otherwise you've got the blinders on, like this, That's and you've right. gone through life. But you, you seem conscious, he's been watching my videos, I'll put animal rights content up, and he come up and talked to me about this, so he's interested, you know. It seems like you're conscious you've had like a spiritual awakening yourself in other ways and I, I could consider this it's like you're waking up to like the matrix so they get they're selling us slaughtered animals we're, we're completely mindless about it like you said when you're an Audi you just grab the meat you just grab the chicken you don't think about this is a bird they had a personality they were they were scared in that slaughterhouse I'm paying for them to, to suffer and die you are just like I want some chicken with my vegetables that's all that's what you think about they don't show you what I show you on these screens that the industry they trick people, they go, this is a, okay, so that you see cows on the grass, you see a happy lamb, you see a beautiful chicken, beautiful feathers, you know, oh, humane stamp of welfare, RSPCA, all this nonsense, right? And then um, you go in and buy it and you're like, oh, thank God, the RSPCA are looking after these animals. They come out of a slaughterhouse, they're chopped up into pieces and people think that some, something good happened to them along the way. It's like, yeah. Another example, I was going to a zoo. I used to be a coach driver, take children to the zoo. I took my phone out to take a photograph. This eagle turned around, literally turned around. And you might think I'm a bit crazy, but I, I have, I have um, divine messages and so forth. But one of the things that it, what I heard is the eagle communicated with me. This sounds crazy, but right? trust me. The eagle says, why are you taking a photograph of me when you know I shouldn't be here? Wow. That, the truth, that is the truth. Um, I've gone to different places and I've, and I've felt that communication of animals being mistreated. And I've, I'm communicated, this is telepathy. Um, telep so animals can, must have to communicate on a different level. They don't have a language they can, like they us. They can, it's not, you're not gonna see an eagle talking to you. Yeah. you you're not gonna see a pig going oink, oink, oink. It's telepathy feeling, the, the, the connection that we have uh, of animals. And if we're really conscious, we will hear what they're really saying. And you know, I never, I'm never going to step in a zoo again. I realize that it's wrong to have them in a zoo. They make an excuse and saying, well, these animals come back from a, a, a slaughter situation, yeah. we're keeping them. But no, the way you're keeping them is barbaric. In a prison. That's right. It's, and we don't like to be in a prison. They shouldn't like to be in a yeah. prison. And not only that, 
The animals have connection with the others that are free. Yeah. So they say, what are you doing in here, man? Well, I don't know. I was, you know, it's unfair. And we need to come out of this. And this is all to do with the satisfaction of human beings. And to, to have that satisfaction, pe people, animals have to suffer. Well, yeah. and you were talking about on a spiritual level, like, I, I mean, this is one of the things that's, that changed me, like karma. And you, when you, we're eating imprisoned, suffered beings and we're making that a part of our body. You know, you're taking an animal that has been almost always in some type of fearful experience, even before their bolt gun to say a free range cow, even before their bolt gun, they know they're about to die or something, they're trying to escape. We're taking that fear our suffering, we're, we're making it a part of our body and I just, don't, I just see any good coming out of that, you know? It's about adjusting, getting your mind to it, um, thinking about what you're going to replace things with yeah. and how you're going to deal with And so, you know, I'm ready for that change, you know yeah. what I mean? I've got this, uh, Challenge 22 is fantastic for that. It's 22 days, it takes 22 days to rebuild a new habit. Okay. So they, they, it's free, everything in, in here is free. All right. So All like, right. you already know, you already know. <laughs> and now it's just about the how. Like obviously, you think both think animal cruelty and abuse is wrong. Being vegan, the word vegan just means opposed to animal cruelty and exploitation. Okay. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just a movement for animals. You know, we've got lots of movements for humans, which I also support. But this is just one for the animals. You know, being vegans, like, look, I'm not going to be the person who pays for their suffering and cruelty anymore. Now you can do it healthy too. You can do whole foods, plant based, be a healthy vegan. If you want a vegan burger and some vegan chocolate, go hard on that. You know, you can have vegan alcohol too. I'm not. Like, it's not necessarily about health for me. Um, it's about the animal abuse and yeah. cruelty. So you can have, you know, you don't have to cheat with a bit of meat. You can cheat with a bit of vegan junk food if you want. But like, it's really good seeing both sides of the coin here. Like, you're uh, both two different people, but you're on like a similar path of like yeah. change. I'm gonna dash this. No worries, Ethan, really Cheers. good talking good to you. Talking to you Send us an email, brother. Send us an email. It's not, a, it's almost not about human beings. It's only about what they can what they can feed their desire yeah. if that desire is so powerful that sometimes the desire is almost addictive what if you had a desire for change for peace then we to change the world change very quickly very quickly so what if you if could we spread desire? that desire like a fire i mean people. You, you're doing something i do something i go out on the streets and i preach i give them um, information in order for them to make people to make informed decisions it was a shame that we couldn't actually get a microphone and video camera and go to the cow and tell us how you feel yeah. um, and what do you think should happen let them stand we we have to we have to try to articulate their pain so sometimes i go into farms and slaughterhouses and yeah. say this is what they're feeling uh -huh. but i don't really know but i'm trying to like you know yeah i i, I always say that you know the first thing you know, if I had to mention spirituality, I would say, imagine that a creator says that we name the animals, not eat them. Yeah. Also, he gave us the vegetation of the land, you know, but again, in the Bible, it shows that they were eating lambs and making sacrifice. And I don't believe that was the case. Well, the Garden of Eden was vegan. That's right. That's right. So he, he was talking about the lion laying down with the lamb and we're going back. Right. To, yeah. And that is going to take place. So even though we are making people aware of certain things in life, it's, it's really preparing them yeah. for a, a new world. Yeah. You know, a, a new a, a, a world where there is no cruelty, a world where love is is abundant in such a way. And I can see that future. Yeah. And that's why I speak about that future of people so that it's create it that's right you make that future and you make the future for people yeah. and if we can get it right here we are gonna enter that future do you know what i'm saying brother thanks man i think that's a good place to end it bro yes. really good talking to you man Thank hey. you. and you too your name is joey joey, joey. and pat joey pat, and pat. good to meet you pat. and you too keep up the amazing work my brother thank you and right. you too yeah take and care I will definitely look at this yeah because i know i'm gonna go through the change excellent yeah, to hear I my know. friend peace to you my brother peace to you. <laughs> Okay, what an amazing chat, inspiring, a very inspiring chat. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. Two people, two different backgrounds, two different places in their lives. Hopefully they both make changes. Um, I could, but Patrick may, I can almost see he's going home to make changes right now. Um, Ethan, maybe, you know, I gave him a pamphlet. Like I said, convenience is a hard one, changing habits, but like, you have to be motivated. You have to have that desire for change and like, Witnessing what the animals go through, if that's not enough, I hope the pandemics thing is enough, the environment thing is enough, I don't know. What will be enough? 
we have to wait and see. But if everyone gets out there and tries their best, maybe we can create the world we want to see. So let's do it.